Hello, good morning everybody. Um, welcome to the talk on Bayesian network modeling and uh, using Python and R. Um, I am a technical architect with CJ Federal and I have a PhD in Computation Sciences and Informatics and that, that is the inspiration for this talk. Let's look at the agenda. The agenda involves looking at the applications of Bayesian network and uh, looking at how it was derived from Bayes' law and the theories of Bayesian network. Uh, we'll follow that with an understanding of the BN ecosystem in both Python and R. So let's first take a look at the applications of Bayesian network. So the very first application which I could come up and it's a somber example is uh, uh, in the early morning of June 1, 2009, Air France flight AF447 went missing. It went missing with 228 passengers and crews and it disappeared over the Atlantic Ocean. They tried multiple techniques and they could not uh, uh, figure out the location of the debris of the flight but later on they decided they should look try, try to use uh, Bayesian network modeling and as part of that they realized it works uh, it worked successfully for them and this is the model that was used for it um, as you can see there's mention of posterior and prior in this chart but um, don't worry about it right now we'll cover that later we um, but as you can see, it's a, it involves multiple parameters on which the prior and posteriors has been taken. So they learned from whatever efforts did not work and they um, tried to use it to the advantage in making the prediction. It has also been used election season. So you can imagine it's been used in the um, election prediction, the polls. Uh, Nate Silver, all of you may have heard of him uh, from 538 blog and Drew Lenzer from Photomatic. They do use... Uh, Bayesian uh, methods for the prediction. Uh, of course, they do use multiple other techniques, but Bayesian network is uh, one of the prime ones and uh, it's been known to work. Some of the other applications are your Office products, uh, Microsoft Office products, Office Assist, which you use for asking questions and learning more about the product. That uses Bayesian modeling. And the other applications are like uh, discovering the relations between genes the environment and the disease propagation for a given population. That's where Bayesian modeling is being used, as well as like for in the astronomy f uh, field, uh, particularly solar science, where they're trying to predict the um, solar flare predictions. Like, as you know, the so sun is dynamic and it has these solar flares which occur from time to time, being able to predict that. So from this you would get an idea that there are varied fields and domains where Bayesian network is being used and can be used. Um, so if you have a problem going forward, uh, hopefully this particular talk will give you an introduction to Bayesian network and when you have a problem to solve, you will think and try to analyze if Bayesian modeling makes sense to use as part of your particular problem or not. So let's look at some of the Python and R uh, packages which deal with Bayesian network modeling. Those are the names. Uh, we will look into a few of them as examples after I've had a chance to explain what Bayesian network modeling is all about. So what, well, let's start from the beginning of Bayes' law. Um, if you, uh, I know equations can get a little scary. So just hold on to this. There are very few equations in this presentation, and this is one of the few of them. Um, so as you can see, what we are trying to say here is the Bayes' theorem, or also which, which is often told as Bayes' law, Bayes' rule. So you hear that they are interchangeable. They, are, they represent the same thing. What it's trying to give you more information on is what is the probability of A given B, which is the very first uh, part of the equation, P of A bar B. That means what is the probability of A occurring given B has already occurred. You have information about B. How do you leverage that to have a better understanding of A? A could be anything. For example, in, as I mentioned, I've used this in my PhD study. So what I used it for was determining the distances of galaxies. So for me, A was the distance of the galaxy. B was all the attributes of the galaxy that I have, that I already measured, and I can use it to be able to better predict the distance of the galaxy. In your case, for your particular problem, you'll have to appropriately define what A is and what B is. B usually means that 
that's all the data and the measurements that you already have and you want to leverage to better understand a particular problem that you're trying to solve. So it's, as you can understand, when I'm saying that there is data available and you're trying to leverage it to solve some particular problem, so what essentially you're doing is, based on evidence, based on the data that you have, which is your evidence, you're trying to come up with a degree of belief for the possible outcomes. Possible outcomes are the different ways the, the problem you're trying to solve can occur. So going back to my example, it could be that the outcomes are is the distance of the galaxy of um, redshift 0.1, or is it 0.2 or 0.3? So the, those are the possible outcomes. And I'm getting, as, after applying Bayesian networks, I get an understanding of what is the, how much can I believe from the data that I have if the distance of the galaxy is 0.1, or if the distance is 0.2 or 0.3. So I get specific numbers for that. And this is Thomas Bayes, who had come up with the Bayes law. Um, it's very interesting how he came up with the law. Uh, actually, he was not credited for it when he was alive. He, it became more popular posthumously. So if you're interested in history of mathematics, uh, it's, I would definitely encourage you to go check it out and learn more about him and the way the Bayes law came about to be. So again, going trying to put it in a more graphical format, what I've been telling about data, evidence, and coming up with a degree of belief for the outcomes, it's that your evidence which also the term used for it is prior. As you remember in the first slide when I was talking about the Air France, that there were certain prior, posterior. So the terms could become a little more clear here. So your evidence is your prior. It represents the belief or the likelihood, which is used for prediction or coming up with a posterior probability, which represents your potential outcomes. So hopefully this chart gives you a little bit more clarity in case you are not from probability and statistics background, but this should give you a better idea of what, what is prior, what is likelihood, and what is posterior. Because th these three terms keep coming up often when you're working with Bayesian networks. Now, specifying a prior probability can be tricky. Why? Because it is a subjective element. If you have data, and you're very sure the data measurements are all good, then oh, well and good, you can use that. But Quite often, it is a subjective element where the person applying the algorithm has to make a decision as to these are the probabilities that I want to go with for the data that I already have or the elements that I'm trying to use to come up with the outcomes. So that becomes subjective and it can lead to a lot of uh, confusion, a lot of controversy over there because your findings are as you can see, your posterior or your prediction is based on your evidence or the prior. So if your prior is incorrect, of course, your prediction will be incorrect. We all know that. Your prediction is as good as the data that you have. So when it comes to Bayesian network modeling, your prior probability is important. It's important to get it as correct as possible. But that should not prevent you from getting started with the exercise of applying this. This prob problem of uh, specifying the prior probability is also known as the reference class problem. So if you want to look that up, you'll get some interesting anecdotes and examples where it has been an issue. So essentially what are we doing with Bayesian modeling is predicting future based on past observations or the priors. And that what does that mean? That means that it lends itself naturally to applications which require predictive analytics. Predictive analytics is a term which is really hot these days, and uh, we keep talking of how can we better improve uh, on the data that we have. And so, since Bayesian Networks does that, whenever you're working with predictive analytics application, I definitely encourage you to consider Bayesian Network Modeling as one of the approaches that you can use for your particular problem. And the best part of Bayesian network is your belief is being updated or can be updated as more evidence becomes available, which is a well-known problem with some of the predictive analytics model where as more data becomes available, your, it becomes difficult to update the model. Whereas in this case, the information associated with the model can be updated as more evidence becomes available. And that makes it a uh, an technique which is uh, which is more convenient and uh, more usable for any given problem. This is 
um, you're all familiar with this whole, um, what do you say, the uh, argument of R versus Python. So this is a similar argument which goes on with the, between, in the statistics field, is frequentist versus Bayesian. There are people who are really passionate for one or the other, and you can have arguments all life long for all you care, because they, so they're really passionate about stuff. Um, I'm not one of them, and I'll, uh, I'll not be able to argue with you for one or the other, but I have used Bayesian network, and I found it useful, so here I am. How does Bayesian contrast with frequentist is that? In frequentist, the observations are modeled as a physical system whose measurements are not exact. So that's the reason you'll have to account for error. And you come up with models for, from the data that you have. Those are typically the distributions. You assume, like, it's, is it a normal distribution? Is it a gamma distribution? Is it a beta distribution? And you do those type of analysis. And from the data, you try to come up with the estimates for the parameters for those models. Bayesian is kind of different. And we'll be going into more detail in the following slides. So in the frequentist concept, the probability of an event is the relative frequency over time. That is proportion of outcome. I have run this thing 100 times, and it has occurred 20 times. So the probability is 20 by 100. In Bayesian world, there's a different concept for that, which is called likelihood. And that, uh, or the belief, um, I should go back. So in the Bayesian side, it's, it is referred to as belief, and they don't use the term probability. The belief says that. I am sure that it will occur 20 of 100 times because I have seen it occur 20 of 100 times. So that's one of the main, uh, or the main way in which your thought has to be different when you're working with Bayesian versus uh, when you're working with the frequentist. I'm sorry, can you repeat that one more time? Yeah. In frequentist, they say that they'll use the term probability, whereas in the Bayesian side, they'll use the term belief. So if an event occurs 20 of 20 times of the 100 times you have run and done through it. In frequent side, they'll say it's 0.2 times. My probability is 0.2. Here they'll say the belief is that it will occur too. So you can see there's a slight different way, um, or rather there's a big difference in the way you are looking at both those numbers. In, in one, you are you're still thinking about it. You have a probability or an uncertainty around it, whereas in uh, Bayesian side, they're saying there's a belief for it and there's an uncertainty for it. So the f first equation uh, must be looking familiar. It's the Bayes' law. So we're trying to understand again what is the posterior prior from that. Excuse me. So over there, you can see um, if we re rewrite the equation a little bit differently, it comes out in the second format over here, not the uh, white, uh, white uh, image over there, but the one right below it. So as you can see, and then that's termed as probability of A given B. That is, you are, you're trying to formulate your problem saying that I want to figure out what is the probability of something occurring given that I have this information. That's called posterior. And the other block is there, and the prior. And this particular piece is called support of B for A. So if we replace um, A and B with O and H, I think that becomes a little bit more clear, um, where it stands for the hypothesis, or you're saying that my um, the redshift of the galaxy is 0.1. Uh, what is the belief associated with it? And my observations is the data set that I have. So just reformulating that whole equation by replacing A with um, H and B with O, you get that equation. Since we have the data at hand, the probability of that data occurring is 1. That's the reason you can remove it from that whole equation, and it comes down to this particular line over here, which means that your posterior is equal to likelihood into prior. OK, I think this was one of the last slides with equations. Let's uh, move on and get into more on how we actually run uh, Bayesian network analysis in R and Python. This is the example. Um, this is the, the x-axis corresponds to predicted value. And the y-axis says, what's the confidence of the predicted value? So I ran a Bayesian network modeling on my problem. And this is the information that I got. As you can see, the probable, uh, sorry, I, sh I should use the term belief or confidence instead of probability. Um, so 
for the different predicted values, what is the confidence associated with them? And I have charted that. So you you could, what you would want to, as a very simplistic application is, go for the one with the maximum probability, because you think that that's most likely to occur. And that's often called the most probable epistory or map value. But you could use this information in multiple ways. You could average out the highest values, or you could take a subset of values and say, these are the four, five values which are most likely to occur. So that's up to you, and you can um, that increases the complexity of your analysis and solution. And so that was Bayes' law. Now let's move on to Bayesian belief network. This is based on the Bayes' law, where we saw that there was a relationship between the observation and the hypothesis. In the Bayesian belief network, it gives a whole graphical look and feel to the whole problem and your solution. It was pioneered by J.D. Pearl. Um, 2011 ASIM Turing Award winner. So what these graphical models of the information that you have or the model that has been generated by your Bayesian network represents it. Each of the node represents a variable in your data set and the, no, uh, and the arcs or the connections, they represent if there is a relationship between those two attributes or not. So for example, in this particular one, Star is my, uh, whatever is my target or whatever I'm trying to estimate. So I'm seeing that that is dependent only on the GR attribute or the column in my data set. I can safely, based on my Bayesian modeling, I can safely ignore these three attributes. Now you would think that this becomes very simple for the target that I'm having, but the, but the level of information that is included in this chart that is something very interesting in the sense that we are not just modeling the target, but we also have a model for the remaining attributes and an understanding of how the other attributes depend on other attributes. What is the relationship among them? For example, even though this model I'll use to predict my star, but if I have missing attributes in IZ, like there are, sorry, missing values, there are certain records which don't have any values in IZ. I can use this model to estimate those missing values. So I have a model which represents the entire data set that I have, or the relationships of the different attributes in that data set, and which can be used to better understand the relationships and the interconnections between the different attributes. Nave base is another term you may have commonly used. It's a special case of the Bayesian network, where we assume that the, the element that you're trying to predict, that is the parent node. And all the other, it depends on all the other features that are there in your data set. But there is no interrelationship between the other attributes. So as you can see, this is, a way, this is the most simple form of a Bayesian network. In Bayesian networks, these attributes in turn can have relationships. And there are different algorithms which will do that for you. And that increases the complexity and the kind of problems the Bayesian network can handle. You may be thinking, how does this work with numeric data? How would it um, formulate the relationships? In that, what you would do is you would come discretize your data, come up with categories for your numeric attributes. Uh, one simple way is like give ranges, saying that if my number is from 1 to 10, that's one category. It's from 10 to 20, it's another category. And the most simplest way, or you could use quantiles, which will split your data into equal buckets, and that you could use them as your categories. And this, uh, the number of data breaks that you use, or the number of splits that you use of your numeric data, that's very important for how uh, complex your problem is, how much it can address, and while you're trying to avoid an overfit, that you're not, your model is not entirely capturing the um, intricacies of the data, it's generic enough. What are the different ways you could evaluate your models are? You look at the characteristics of the network, like as I was showing you the earlier chart where there was this uh, interconnection between different attributes, you can better understand your network um, of and the relationship between the attributes. Combination of multiple generated networks. Run Bayesian network multiple times on your data. Come up with multiple networks. Look at them. Which are most often, uh, which links are most often occurring? Include them. Uh, actually, the R example that uh, I'll be showing, uh, that does that. So you'll get a better idea of what I mean by combination of multiple generated networks. 
as we already talked. Uh, it's an intelligent aid in fixing your missing data. You can use your model for that purpose. And of course, you want your model to be to have high predictive accuracy while also being good in terms of the execution time. So these are the different possible types of Bayesian networks. Um, when you're looking at algorithms to implement, when you want, if you want to solve your problem using Bayesian networks, these are the potential different ways. I'll not go into too much detail on them, but as you remember, I said uh, Nave Bayes is a special case of Bayesian network, but there are these other ones. Um, if I may, I, I, I can, excuse me. The one or K dependence Bayesian networks, it's a, it's a tree format of your network, and it's saying that every attribute can only depend on one other attribute, if it is a one dependence network. If, if you're coming up with a K dependence, where K is greater than one, so you say you have a three dependence network, you are saying that, you are telling your algorithm that I want to formulate a network where there can be maximum three interconnections or three other attributes on which a given attribute can depend. So, uh, so base is the most commonly used, uh, right? Is yes. The most, is the most robust technique? Like, what, what, what's the main driver? It's one of the simplest because, as you can see, it doesn't involve the complexity of interconnections and trying to figure that out. You are taking whatever you want to predict. That is the parent road. So you can see it's much more simpler to specify than having to run through the algorithm, figure out if your models, uh, how your models are converging. And uh, if you see two different networks, they'll have different interconnections showing up. So due, due to that, naive base is uh, more, more commonly used. Good question. Thank you. So, for the Bayesian network, again, the algorithm categories, they fall into these two main things, constraint-based and scoring-based. Um, I have the definitions there, but constraint-based says that uh, you're trying to find the conditional inde independence among the attributes, and you're using that information to come up with your tree structure or uh, your attribute relationship structure. It's more efficient than the score-based approach, um, particularly when you have large number of uh, data set, large your data set is large. At that point, you would want to look at the constraint-based. Scoring-based is where um, it heuristically formulates a network of the different attributes you have in your data set. And then you also have a scoring method. So from the network formulated, you score it, and you say that, is it meeting my threshold or not? If it's meeting your threshold, you accept it as one of the models, or you don't. So as you can see, there's a two different ways of trying to come up with that network of attributes in your data set. And of course, there can be hybrids of both those methods. Um, so we, we have, hopefully, this has given you a little bit more clarity on Bayesian networks, prior likelihood and posterior, and what Bayesian networks actually mean. Let's go ahead and take a look at the, what's the Bayesian network ecosystem in Python and R. So this slide should look familiar. We have seen it earlier. It's the set of packages which are available in Python and R. And the three dots at the end of the list should tell you that there's lots more. Of course, this list is not exhaustive, as you, you, you may have guessed earlier on itself. Um, so of course, um, scikit-learn, numpy, and mat sorry. Matplotlib is the first example we are looking at. Um, most of you, I'm guessing, of if you've been working with Python for a long time, you are familiar with this particular package, which is a set of scientific algorithms. So SciPy stands for Scientific Python. So there's a lot of algorithms that have been implemented. The one we are taking a look at here is how do you uh, formulate a model and formulate a Bayesian model, and how do you predict on it? So you are, you are um, how do you install it is in the very first line over there. Uh, Conda installs scikit-learn if, you if you're using Anaconda. And then uh, there's the package called sklearn underscore native, um, sorry, sklearn dot native underscore base, from which you can import the Gaussian NB, uh, stands for naive base. So is, this is a naive base example from Sky scikit that I'm showing here. You get your data populated, you import the library, you get your data populated, then you are creating a Gaussian classifier, you're training the model, and then you use it to predict. So this is the typical flow you would go through, irrespective of whichever package you are using for your analysis. Sorry, can you talk a little bit about the requirements of the data set and the sort of testing that you have to do regarding like normality and collinearity between? Uh, 
usually just like run the model? You usually run the model. If there's some type of normalization change yeah. you want to do, you're more than welcome to do it. Wow. But definitely you can take the data, put it into your model, identify which is your target variable, and then uh, uh, let the model run on it. If you're trying to just run it through your data, then yes, but uh, you can do the necessary analysis beforehand. That's beyond the scope of this talk. We can keep on talking about that. But if you have a data set and you just want to see how it performs with, then yes, this is your approach. But yeah, there's a lot more you can do in advance to make sure that the uh, approaches you are using are applicable or not. But that should not prevent you from trying it out. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> OK. And there's a few other examples I have here. Um, you could use your, um, again, scikit-learn, um, Gaussian mixture, Bayesian Gaussian mixture. I'll just skip through this. I'll have a GitHub um, URL available for my talk. If, if you can reach out to me later on, I can make it available. I'll also include it in the slide, the copy that is made available later on. Um, so all this code should be available for you to try it out on your own later on. Sample of the exploratory analysis that precedes modeling. If you're going to actually like extract findings from it, for that, that you've done, do you have any samples on your GitHub? Um, I don't have it on GitHub, but I can make it available. Uh, I have from my um, other exercise data related stuff that I have done. Yeah. Definitely. Let's catch up after the talk if you have any specifics that you want. Okay, this is the second package um, that we, I want to quickly go through is the base pi. Uh, this. Uh, so one thing I've realized when you're looking at these packages is that uh, each are, there are multiple packages available, but they don't implement everything, which, can, which is kind of understandable, right? But each of these packages have certain niche areas that they address. One good example of that is BasePy. It only covers the variational Bayesian inference um, for a particular type of uh, distribution data. Actually, somebody just mentioned this morning that there's a talk which is entirely dedicated to va variational Bayesian analysis this, this afternoon. So if you're really interested, please do check it out. And it may be a good um, next presentation after this particular talk. So it, and this has only been implemented for Python 3. So if you are working with Python 2, this will not work. This library cannot be used. So take a look at that. And they have certain good examples. These are the examples on their website. So do take a look at these as uh, potential users. The third library that I um, had a quick look at was Bayes Block. Um, it's a C++ and Python implementation. Um, the links are I've provided links on uh, the examples using this particular package. The best part of this is that it, they have certain building blocks. So even if you are not well acquainted with what Bayesian network analysis involves, you can look at these blocks and put them together and get it working as a Python Bayesian network application. So I, I thought that was really neat that they um, they have used the blocks concept, and which can make it much more easier to use a particular library compared to having to um, go through each and every nitty gritty detail uh, steps of implementing a particular library. So the blocks include steps. The blocks are like defining Gaussian variables, performing summation, multiplication, and those type of different operations you would perform on your data as part of your Bayesian network analysis. And this is a code example from that. So you could kind of see that there's a pattern where you're trying to get the data, you learn the model, and then you're performing inference on it. And the syntax or the particular method name that you're using to perform these different steps are different across the different libraries, and you put them all together to be able to do your um, prediction. So let's quickly take a look at R. Um, so those are the few Python libraries that I had a chance to look at. There are lots more. There are lots more uh, which are like WinBugs, Stan, and uh, Jags. These three, I, I see a lot of uh, articles coming up where they're using these three libraries. So you may want to check, check them out. Um, so moving on to R. Uh, R has this page, uh, which is a Cron ta ta task view of for Bayesian. So this lists almost all the different packages that are available in R. Um, relevant to Bayesian network modeling. The, the list that is shown on the top of the, the, the image here are the ones which are 
applicable for general data cases, for your general application. The list below are for specific models. So as I mentioned, like they, there are lots of packages available, but some are some are something you can take and start using for your data, but there are some which are very specific for a particular type of data, for a particular use case, and they have very niche, very specific cases that they can handle. So though this list of general models is eight, there are about 80 or 80 plus packages which can handle your specific case. So if the problem you are trying to address is in that niche case, uh, you should definitely check out the special case packages. Um, but if you don't know what exact category your problem is or what is the specific case uh, that your problem of specific data distribution, etc., then definitely start with the general packages and then move on to your specific cases as you get more understanding of your data and the need of your application. So my favorite uh, R package is BN Learn. It's Bayesian Network Learn. They have implemented multiple of algorithms. Um, if you remember, I had mentioned there are two categories, constraint-based and the score-based types of Bayesian algorithms. So BN Learn has implemented most of them. You can run, um, you can develop your code and run through each of them multiple times and see which one performs better on your data because again the performance of the algorithm depends on the characteristics of your data so you would want to run through those different algorithms and figure out which one is uh, the most um, which has high predictive accuracy as well as which is executing in much lesser time so if we take a look at this particular one you see that we are splitting the data into training and test um, that's a uh, method that i particularly I use for my own uh, split train and test. Then you're building a uh, 200 node uh, networks. Sorry, you're building uh, 200 networks using hill climbing, which is one of the score-based algorithms. There are other score-based algorithms which are there as part of this package. But I am, as part of this ex example, I'm using hill climbing. So I am using the algorithm HC. I'm generating 200 networks from my data. And then in the next step, I'm saying that of these 200 networks I have generated, create a network which includes the nodes that have occurred in 85% of those 200 networks. So I formulate 200 networks from those, for the interconnections that are there between the attributes. I only retain the ones which occurred in 85% of those networks. The rest I drop. So that gives me a more strong network which has consistently occurred in 85% of my 200 networks. Then I have the network, then I use the data that I have to formulate the joint probability distribution for the different relationships that are showing up in the interconnections. And um, this one is just a uh, graph V's package, which you can use to, um, which you can use to for, um, uh, review the network that has been generated. And this is the inference phase where you have generated the model, now you want to run it on your test data and, uh, uh, and predict, using the model, predict for the test data uh, how the model is performing. So again, this should all be available in the GitHub. And you try to come up with the, if it, excuse me, if you remember the earlier, there was a plot where I was showing the uh, predicted values and the confidence associated with it. So this particular way, I'm trying to find which one has the maximum probability and I want to use that. There's another package called Bayesian Network. So that gives you a more uh, graphical user inter interface to use for uh, working with the BN Learn package. If you're trying to start learning BN Learn package, go ahead and use this. This is a very new package and it has a lot of neat functionalities and helps to learn it faster and um, in a more fun way than having to run commands. And the other application is um, Stan, which I mentioned is one of the other applications. So it is available for both Python and R. So if you want to come up with something that is applicable in both Python and R, definitely give this a shot. So sharing some of my experiences is that um, before you start thinking that you can use a particular package, spend some time reviewing the documentation to understand what type of functionalities it supports and, uh, and if it actually will be applicable to your problem or not. Um, so use that. 
Important to be aware of the packages support for Python 2 versus Python 3. That may be your first decision point. If you, are, if you cannot change your Python version from one or the other, then that becomes a good um, attribute to use to make your decision. Um, one thing which I've heard most of my data scientist friends uh, often um, say is how they work is quickly experiment in R, implement in Python. Uh, but of course, that's not universally applicable. It will be depending on your use case. Um, but definitely something you can consider. And when you're working with R, try to come up with R shiny applications, uh, just the way the earlier screenshot where it was um, showing a GUI for learning B and learn. That's definitely much more easier because you don't have to keep on changing your parameters and the command line and running it. You're, your GUI gives you a better way to be able to experiment all the different functionalities that are available as part of your particular package that you're experimenting. And particularly if you're trying to tune the parameters, etc. Look for existing code examples, and all of us are aware of that. Um, GitHub, CRAN, um, Google, Stack Overflow, uh, it's, there's some of the ways which most of us use. And of course, keep experimenting. That's the best way to learn. Um, So thank you for your time, and I'm open for questions. Uh, can I give a little bit more clarity into the difference between Bayesian modeling and the probabilistic modeling? And uh, the other question was uh, yeah, if this is a data generation or an optimization problem. So the first one I think I covered earlier on in the talk that uh, there are two thought processes of the statisticians. One is the probabilistic way of thinking and the other one is the Bayesian network modeling or Bayesian uh, thought process. In uh, probabilistic model, they depend on how frequently something is occurring, and they leverage that information. No, no, my question is, there's this phrase called probabilistic programming. So is this a form of probabilistic programming? I'm not familiar with the term probabilistic programming, so I will not take a guess on that. If you want to give a little bit more detail on what do you mean by probabilistic programming, are you referring to using different uh, libraries to get a better understanding of the data? So this could be considered as a type of probabilistic programming where you, are, you have your data, using that you try to better understand the, um, the data, the relationships between the attributes, and uh, use that to further enhance your data as well as to be able to predict on certain things. And the other thing was, is it a data generation or optimization problem? This is a data modeling approach. This is, uh, you are optimizing on it as well. You're trying to come up with a model around your data. Um, so how you would do any type of predictive analytics is also you, you could use uh, Bayesian modeling as one of the approaches. It's one of the modeling techniques. So like decision trees, um, so Bayesian modeling is a type of a decision tree as well, but it, it includes much more. But I have to think about the distributions on every node that I put in, right? It's not, I can't just have you, you get the interconnection and then based on your data you come up with the joint probability distribution. Your data is letting you come up with the joint probability distribution for a given node. Yes, please. How are you measuring the interactions between the attributes? That's in the whole uh, the algorithm which generates the network, where you could use uh, constraint-based or you could use uh, score-based methods, if you remember this slide. So that's how the network is formulated. So there are two different approaches where, see this, this you, will, you will never be able to come up with an exact solution for the data you have. It's an NP hard problem. So you will have to come up with approximate and heuristics uh, based approaches. And these two are the two, two different ways of coming up with those approximate or heuristic solutions. One is where you um, take two attributes at a time and you, you, you have the data with you. So try to understand what is the conditional um, independence among them. If they're conditionally independent, there's no 
interconnection between them. So are you using something like correlation or, or not? You could use, uh, there are multiple ways in which you could, uh, you could define your correlation uh, measurement. Any other questions? Yes, please. You, you mentioned you use this in your PhD research. Um, how large was that data set? And do you know of any applications of this for very large data that can't fit on a single mode? Oh, yes. Um, there were a lot of applications which I mentioned. They are big data problems. My data set was about 1 million records. Um, but it, the best part of Bayesian networks is that you could uh, run it on multiple nodes. Like for my case, I ran the same algorithm. I, I got the model. Then I ran it in multiple nodes. So I get the prediction from the multiple nodes. So, you said you had your information available. Is that on the last slide? Um, information as in the GitHub URL or? What's your GitHub handle? GitHub handle is my first name, but you can. My GitHub handle is my first name only. <laughs> I mean, I was just hoping.